Welcome to this guide today. The topic will be auction market theory, e.g. AMT. So this is going to be a complete guide. I'm going to go in depth about everything. By the way, if you want to learn more about me, the way I trade, everything that I'm doing and I'm using in the bio of this video, there's going to be links. Go and check them out. Now, why do market moves? So first we have to understand what is the difference between the limit order and the market order, right? So pretty much limit order. Limit order is primarily being used by liquidity makers, makers and large press. And the market order is, e.g. Delta, is a liquidity taker. Why? Because let's take a look at the DOM as an example, right? Simply explained. So this is the DOM, e.g depth of market this is where you're being shown the ad advertisement right so the advertisement is being placed on the dom and is executed against market orders these are often called heavier hand in market as large press cannot afford to use market order because they would often get considerable slippage so what i mean by this let's say you want to fill in btc position worth 50 million right so 50 million, you want to fill it. How do you do it? Via limits. Because if you press market, you see, if you want to fill 50 million, you're going to get slipped between 59.4 and 59.6 most likely, because you're just going to absorb all these orders, you're going to have a, have a huge slippage. So people that have large wallets, they never ever use markets because of this reason, because of the slippage. Now, I'm going to continue explaining about the limit order. So, as I said, these are often the heavier hand of the market because they're being used by large players. Large players cannot afford to use market orders because of that slippage. So, they use various advanced orders such as icebergs to hide the intention and not get front -end. So, if you're putting a limit order to the other book, you're making liquidity because you're adding the liquidity to the market because limits are the heavier hand they are the ones that stop markets in trading environments from advancing or declining as aggressive market participants e.g market orders often hit the limit wall and get absorbed right and what are the markets market orders so these are being executed as at market you know you just press buy or sell and you get filled at the first available price but if you want to be filled at large size you cannot press market because you're gonna get slipped and you're gonna affect the market now keep in mind that btc is high volatility you know um why is it high volatility because there's a low number of resting orders there's no limits and you've been trading these assets with uh, lots of volume by these assets i mean nasdaq gc and btc so gc is the gold futures and the low volatility is occurring at high number of resting orders limits and there's not many people that play at market so low volatility such as bonds and treasuries what is uh, amt auction market theory so this was found back in 1960 by a person named j peter stadelmeyer so he developed the concept and later on jim dalton recognized the idea and further developed it into a book concept as i said was found in 1960 and basically it explains how financial markets operate like auctions where buyers and sellers interact to determine fair value and the theory focus on the dynamics of supply and demand to find balance price discovery and market behavior so to put it in a simple terms you do first of all the way it applies not only to the market it applies to real estate retail art and collectibles online marketplaces agriculture you know beans coffee doesn't matter you, the same theory applies this is financial markets lesson 101 now discovery when there's a discovery this is a low volume move and pretty much the market is looking for new bars and new sellers and it expands and it starts moving in one direction then it finds its fair value the bounced area where there's equal supply and demand and high volume area where price remains range bound you know within a distribution or price home this occurs 70 or 80 percent of the time price is in balance in range only 20 percent of the time price is ranging you know you lots of times you're gonna see people posting oh it's gonna break out it's gonna break out brother trade the range simple so 
When you're in bounced area, you're in fair value, you create a market event, new information enters, and you do create an imbalance. Imbalance means there's more demand than supply or more supply than demand. And this is where you get the expansion. This occurs in 20% of the time, you know. Now, <coughs> there's two major things that are aiming uh, to be achieved, you know. The first one is to find the fair value and facilitate trade in a two-way auction process. So auction market theory translates this process through supply and demand dynamics and price discovery. You know, pretty much coming into the previous slide, I want to explain this. So you do have discovery. So you're looking for balance, price is efficient. Over here, you, you have already achieved that efficiency, you have found that fair value, and then an imbalance occurs. Uh, uh, this is an example with real estate, right? So you do have a horse auction in a neighborhood where it's been auctioned, let's say, at low 30, 350 and high 450. It is being balanced between that price, right? Then something happens. You see there's, I don't know, Donald Trump moves into the neighborhood. And then all of a sudden, the new fair value jumps up. So market event imbalance occurs, and then you do create new fair value. And then the market imbalance incurs and then you do create new fair value right so the marketing balance comes from the buy side the first time when donald trump moves into the um, the neighborhood then you do find that fair value simply uh now an example which i want to show you very quickly another one so pretty much if we look at hypothetical example in stock market let's say that one share of samsung stock traded 50 dollars so a new found new song samsung phone comes out and it's terrible the battery is not working it's overheating because of this event the samsung stock starts dropping of its value until it finds new bars let's say 30 dollars per share this is when new value is being created and after some time phone get repaired and price of the stock starts to rise again this is where the market is likely to stop the previous value is around 50. and this is eventually what market every market does as market participants negotiate prices between balance and imbalance values auction market theory defines an area where 68 percent of the volume has traded as value area and inside value area is also a point of control this is the level where the market has traded most of the volume or spent most of the time if you're looking at tpo or volume profile it's different measures so one is measuring time another one is measuring volume right so this is one market profile uh, it represents the value area and the point of control based on time and a volume profile it represents the value area and point of control based on volume simple what is balance market right what is a balance market so balance market is pretty much in a balance market buyers and sellers agree on prices that they're willing to buy and sell for current prices it is because they perceive these prices as fair value a balance market is usually represented by lower volatility prices remain more or so the same and the markets are ranging Thanks to the market and the volume profile, we can recognize what is the fair value. So the fair value looks like Gaussian bell shaped curve, which I already showed you in the picture above. Uh, I have not attached the picture, I removed it because I want to put the text, but later on you're gonna see it. So if the market would be in balance forever, it would just oscillate around the fair value, which we know is not a common theme in financial markets. With new information coming to the market, this can be fundamental or technical drives, markets leave the fair value and shift to the second environment. So what is an imbalance? Imbalance is the exact opposite of balance. This is a disagreement about the fair value. This happens 20% of the time. And the general rule of thumb is that once market is inside the value, it will more, li like more likely stay in balance into it and explore uh, the insights of the value range. And simply put, one side of the market participants is more aggressive, which causes the market to be trending initiative and responsive activity now we're going to speak about these two activities so out of the market spends 80 percent of the fair value it often tries to leave it and when this happens there are two possible scenarios two types of activity which uh, mr stadom i have called responsive and initiating so responsive activity is an expected behavior i'm gonna jump into here so the responsive activity is the expected behavior when the market breaks below the value buying is expected and when market breaks above value selling is expected for example if the market opens above the previous day value area we can expect that price is too high compared to the previous day value and therefore return to the previous day value is expected if the market opens below the previous day value area it is too cheap and we can expect the responsive activity to buy back to value responsive activity is often seen in quick spikes and stop runs where the market reaches a certain level of liquidity and returns to the fair value. 
this is what a responsive activity means okay so over here you see on this day this is a tpo chart market profile so over here i wanted to pay attention to the 14 right so price is opening above the previous day value uh, then it comes back and it does have like a full rotation to the value area low so pretty much the market participants agreed that this value is much higher than actually the asset should be priced in and you do rotate down <coughs> simply put initiating activity so the initiative initiating activity is basically unexpected and this is when the market breaks below value selling is unexpected and when market breaks above value buying is unexpected so these moves occur only when the environment shifts as a perception of the fair value changes and we can spot these as price breakouts of value and getting accepted let me see if this is a good example over here so as i said initiating initiating activity is unexpected and basically when you break below value selling is unexpected so <coughs> an example is over here on the 15th you break below the previous day value and you create selling but you come back in and there's no no buying yet uh so however this is uh, not the best examples we can i'm gonna show some charts later on now acceptance and failed auction now <coughs> just for the terminologies initiative and responsive activity is more so a theory but luckily we can pretty quickly determine if new prices are getting accepted or not so on acceptance Acceptance is where price breaks fair value on significant volume and convincing price action we can expect new price to be accepted above or below that fair value. So this is usually support and resistance flip for more price action trading with enough time and its space before the retest. This tells us the market participants agree to new prices and we can expect continuation once an old value area gets tested. Now a failed auction occurs when prices come outside of value and not gain acceptance. There is no increase in volume on breakout and from price action point of view we can see a long week and returns back to point of breakout these are open v-shape reverses back to the levels an example right here what price is doing it breaks above value there's no spike in the volume you know this is a very very good example you see over here the breakout there is no spike in the volume zero so this creates a failed auction simple <coughs> coming back into the presentation there are a few rules which you need to know 10 rules if price accepts into balance area likely to have a full rotation price imbalance is expected to reject the value area high or the value area low until proven otherwise pa is choppier inside va or balance if pa is accepted outside of balance it's likely to become imbalanced what doesn't happen is most important oftentimes the destination of the imbalance is prior balance area Price often retests edges of balances to form up the area. If price, if price reacts strongly to the POC, that can disrupt rule number one. So if you have a range bounce scenario, you create an imbalance, then you come back into that range and there's rejection the point of control. Pretty much you're gonna have a failed rotation and you're not gonna rotate into the value area high or value area low, you're just gonna reject the point of control. Time limits opportunities. Often time after a destination is achieved in a session, there is less opportunity. If time or volume builds at the edges of the balance, or to, to, to simply explain it, if, if you have a consolidation. Uh, so an example, let's say you have, you ignore this price section. Let's, let's come over here. So you have a range bound scenario. Oops. And price starts consolidating over here and it spends majority of time here it's gonna most likely break out this is the last rule so thank you for watching this tutorial i hope you learned something hope i didn't go too fast through it if you want to connect with me this is my twitter this is my instagram and i wish you a nice day